Hey guys, I've titled this lesson that we're having today, Rolling Out the Red Carpet, Safe Passage for the Appearing of Antichrist. Jeffrey Leon, welcome to this edition of Satan's Strategic Command, dedicated to the advancement of Christian theology, explicating the mark of the beast. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stone and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration." So guys, we see Satan appears the, as the dragon in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, and verse 12, when he's cast out of heaven. We see the dragon transform its power unto the beast in Revelation chapter 13, 4, and he had... And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. And then the beast, then we see the beast that summons, commissions, and anoints its image in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 through 14. And finally, we see the fulfillment of the ministry of the image to the beast, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, which makes it absolutely crystal clear that the the uh, uh, that Satan has an administration. He has a ministry that is attempting to incorporate the worship of death within the body of Christ. So again, finally we see the fulfillment of the ministry of the image to the beast, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, and Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, where the seal of Satan appears as it blossoms into the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity, clearing safe passage, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, for the appearing of the beast or Antichrist, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. So Revelation 13, 15 through 17, we have the, the, the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast as it creates a civil and a, a, a ecclesiastical union. We see the, the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast as it, it, it forces all flesh to worship it on pain of death. It doesn't say to worship, it forces all flesh to worship the beast. It doesn't say it forces all flesh to worship false apostate Christianity. It says it forces all flesh to worship the image of the beast on pain of death. And then in verse 16 and 17, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark in the right hand and their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This appears to be a religious tax that was caused also by the image of the beast. So the image of the, be the, the, image of the beast created this civil and ecclesiastical union that appears in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. And as it block this this union, this civil and ecclesiastical union that gives the image of the beast power to kill human beings summarily without any pretense of judgment, justice, or righteousness, and forces a religious tax upon the population, as the this ministry of the image to the beast blossoms into the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity, it clears safe passage. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, which is declared here in, in this passage. It is clearing a safe passage for the appearing of the beast or antichrist that appears in corporeal form in Revelation chapter 13, 18, right after the seal of Satan is made manifest by the image of the beast. Revelation 13, 18, and he had power to give life in the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So, the ministry of the image of the beast blossoms via the seal of Satan, Revelation 13, 15 through 17, in, into the fullness of its numbers and operational capacity. And, th and this clears safe passage for the appearing of the beast or antichrist. And that safe passage is declared in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19. 
Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. That's a very important, that first verse is very important to the rest of the passage. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. So, we have in the first verse 14, Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Verse 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. So what we have here is we have uh, this declaration. Of this appears to me to be God declaring the, the criminal pathology of the spirit of Antichrist as it comes to fruition with the seal of Satan in the heart of the image to the beast. Verse 17, for they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. This appears to me to be a direct reference to the harlot drinking in of the spirit of Antichrist in Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. That is declaring that is declaring the torment of spiritual captivity with the spirit of Antichrist within the soul of what appears to me to be the image of the beast. Because we know the image of the beast is the only corporeal administrator, minister, and mediator between all flesh and the spirit of Antichrist. It pours out the spirit of Antichrist, Revelation 14, 9 and 10, and it solicits the worship of death, Romans 3, 13, and it captivates all flesh on pain of death within its environment making manifest satanic captivity unto the mark of the beast. So Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14 through 19 appears to me to be the spiritual captivity, the torments. It shows us a little bit about the torment that resides within the image of the beast as it successfully incorporates the worship of death, not only into false apostate Christianity, but into civil power. That's what the seal of Satan is attempting to do. It's not only false apostate Christianity where it's attempting to incorporate the worship of death. It's also attempting to incorporate the worship of death into the constitution of man with the seal of Satan in predestination, 51%. So Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, we see God declaring the spiritual pathology of the of the image to the beast with the anointing of the spirit of antichrist resident with the seal of satan and predestination within its blood but we also see the natural manifestation of the image to the beast works declared in verse 17 for they eat the bread of, excuse me for they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. Here we have the natural manifestation of works, where the torment of hell and the anointing of the of the spirit of Antichrist is residing within and tormenting the soul of those that are the manifest ministry of Antichrist in our world today. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and they drink the wine of violence. So verse 17 and 18 of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19, gives us the natural manifestation as they are successful in incorporating the worship of death into the constitution of man and made manifest within civil power and ecclesiastical powers. And they have turned the constitution their constitutions into a facsimile of organized crime or a drug cartel and they're operating in this capacity within democracy democratic process and constitutional protections okay so we see we see in proverbs 4:14 4, through 19 we see not only the declaration enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. We see the, the spiritual uh, pathology 
of, of the 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 anointing with the spirit of Antichrist, but we also see their works. We see them making manifest captivity in their torments and their 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 works making manifest the the spirit of Antichrist that resides within their souls. And this is actually this is making this is making this is clearing the pathway for the appearing of Antichrist. Verse 19, for the way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. Okay, and this is depicted, we were talking about this in Matthew chapter 13, verse, a few weeks ago, we were discussing this in Matthew chapter, excuse me, it is, uh, Uh-oh. I can't find the passage. The passage is, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind. It's Matthew 15. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And the bl if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Matthew chapter 15 verses 13 and 14. So what we have is we have this captivity. We have this, this captivity being declared as spiritual blindness, leading people into satanic captivity and into the pit of destruction that Satan has prepared for all those that manifestly are declared to be his children. So it's an amazing, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 through 19 gives us the spiritual anointing of the image of the beast and the manifestation of its works as it goes satanically insane with the spirit of Antichrist in predestination, we know today it solicits the worship of death, it pours out the spirit of Antichrist, and it start it begins laboring to make manifest the seal of Satan within its environment by incorporating the worship of death not in not only into ecclesiastical power, but into civil powers and corrupting the constitution of man and making manifest the seal of Satan in its perfection as it appears in Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17. So the image of the beast is, it is the vessel that clears safe passage so people are not cognizant of death's resonance within their environment in the form of the beast. So, in, in the form, in the corporeal form of the appearing of the beast. People will know, people will know that death is nearby, just like people know today through coronavirus that death is accelerating. The harvest has begun and death is accelerating and death is, is within their grasp and within their environment. It's becoming much more of an intimate detail within the thoughts of their lives and their affections now on a day-to-day -day basis. And the ministry of the image to the beast magnifies this so much more. The criminal pathology is declared by Holy Father God in its fullness of its numbers and operational capacity in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17. And men are aware, but people, the image to the beast is the vessel that clears the pathway so people are not cognizant of the appearing of the beast and that the beast is Antichrist. Okay, so this, this, the, uh, Proverbs 4, 19, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Every plant which my heavenly father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Okay, the beast appears to be a lower form or natural form of captivity for the dragon or Satan. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12, where Satan is cast out of heaven and resides in the atmosphere surrounding our earth. Thus it is declared in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 7 and 8.
Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. This is this appears, this two passages, this these two verses, Ezekiel 28, 7 and 8, appear in the passage of, 20, of Ezekiel 28, verse 1 through 10, which appears to me to be the the Holy Father God declaring the death warrant upon the appearing of Antichrist into our world when it as it becomes his time to to suffer the first death that God has declared upon him. So the beast appears to be a lower form or natural form of captivity from the dragon or Satan. Satan's captivity appears in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9 and 12. And thus it is declared in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 7 and 8, the captivity, the, the defilement of Satan's captivity in the spirit as he is forced into corporeal form just as Jesus was, and he's made manifest as the beast in our natural world. We see this declared, we see this, this lower form uh, of, of, of spirit becoming a natural uh, Wrap cloak, cloak, spirit cloaked in flesh, this lower form or natural form as a man declared unto Christ in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So it is apparent Antichrist is referred to as the beast in Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. And he had power to give life in the image of the beast. Said, Excuse me. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. So it is apparent... It is apparent Antichrist is referred to as the beast in Revelation 13, 18, as the capability to choose to cultivate the fruits of righteousness, Galatians 5, and 23, and magnify the glory of Holy Father God is no longer present within his being. Jude chapter 6, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting change. In darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Okay, that was a misquote. So I'd, I'd, that's one that I haven't I haven't specifically applied to me. I know 2 Peter 2, 4. So, um, and 1 John 1, 5, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So it's declared here that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. But we know the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what they stumble. Um, 1 John 2.10 2, and 11. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, but whoso are the hate of this brother... Wait, wait, wait. 1 John... 1 John 2.10 He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Here we see the captivity coming upon those that are walking in darkness that are not cognizant. They're not cognizant. They may be cognizant of death's final results by the manifestation of of people dying around them, but they're not spiritually cognizant of death's residence and its capacity within the habitation of man. Okay, so let me say that again. People are that, that walk in darkness and go further and further into darkness away from God are not, they may be cognizant of death's residence as a natural man when he drives by a cemetery or even witnessing people being killed or people dead bodies within their environment. But spiritually, they're not cognizant of death's habitation within the constitution of man. Okay, so... So it is apparent that Antichrist is referred to as the beast in Revelation chapter 13, 18, as the capability to choose to cultivate the fruits of righteousness, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and magnify the glory of Holy Father God is no longer present, Jude 6 and 1 John 1, 5. Thus is declared unto mortal man in Psalm chapter 49, verse 20 and 19. Man that abideth in honor and understandeth not is like the beast's 
that perish. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Okay, and Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 18. Satan knows he has to exchange light for darkness. Thus his, his administration is declared in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. Let me say that again. Satan knows that he has to exchange light for darkness, tr uh, the, uh, the abode of truth for the abode of a lie, and thus his administration is declared in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no moral, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. So this passage says it declares the ministry of Satan as Satan the, an angel is a messenger, and the light is the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. John eight twelve. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, 6 and 7. Okay? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, we know that, that Satan, Satan knows that he has to exchange light for darkness. Thus, his administration is declared... In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, his ministry, his, his administration of the spirit of Antichrist. Satan is not in the business of making money or fulfilling himself sexually with human beings. Satan is in the business of anointing people with the spirit of Antichrist, period. Okay? Let me say that again. Satan is not in the business of making money and having sexual intercourse intercourse with thousands of women that's not his that's not what's being declared here satan is in the business of pouring out the spirit of antichrist and imposing the mark of the beast upon all flesh period that's all he's interested in okay there's i can't say that any any more clear than what it is so Satan knows he has to exchange light for darkness. Thus his administration is declared in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, until he has power to force man to abide in a lie on pain of death. John chapter 8, verse 44, you are your father of the devil, unless your father you will do. You are murdered to fulfill all your lusts, as that, as that pertains to the captivity of the image of the beast. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 through 17, where he finally manages to obtain sexual and monetary control over the population on pain of death. And that would be, of course, the image to the beast. The king of Babylon is the will of one man and one man alone. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. Okay? Revelation chapter 17, 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. So the kingdom of ba the kingdom of Babylon is the will of one man and one man alone. And thus the golden cup contains the fullness of iniquity in the spirit of Antichrist. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup. In the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken, the nations have drunken over wine, therefore the nations are mad. 1 John 2, 15-18, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, this is the last time. As ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, we see the spiritual revelation chapter 17 verse 5 and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth we see in revelation chapter 17 verse 5 the spiritual kingdom of babylon declared upon the souls that appear arrayed within the great harlot and her daughters those whose habitation is no longer residing in the glory of God. 1 John 4, 16, for God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and dwells in God and God in him. John Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, where Jesus declares, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. 
So the kingdom of Babylon in the last days is spiritually a parallel to the kingdom of Babylon in ancient times, circa 500 BC, that subjugates all flesh to the will of the king. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness of instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. That word for captive here that appears in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 24 through 26 is the Greek word Z-O-G-R-E-O, -E Zorio, and it means to take alive, to make, to, to take alive as to make, making a prisoner of war. It means to capture or ensnare, to take captive or to catch. Okay, so it's that's specifically the captivity that's being declared here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26 is captivity, appears to me it's pointing directly to captivity with those that are taken captive by the spirit of Antichrist and receive the mark of the beast and are take the final their final seats. And we know Revelation chapter 17, verse 1 through 6 is the final seat of all lost souls in the kingdom of hell arrayed in a graduating scale as manifest by their works and their proximity to the appearing of Antichrist. So it appears to me that what's being depicted here by Paul to Timothy in the second book of Timothy, Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 through 26, is captivity with spiritually the anointing of the spirit of Antichrist and finally the manifestation of the seal of Satan as the mark of the beast resides within their soul. So this is uh, this is an amazing passage of scripture, and we know that captivity is spiritual. It cannot be discerned by people that are residing in Babylon. Malachi chapter four puts it this way: Malachi chapter four, verse. 16 through 18, excuse me, Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 through 18, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. The wicked, the way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble, but the path of the, of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. We know absolutely the wicked are no longer cognizant within their souls of the glory of God at the second advent of Jesus Christ. And before that, when they receive the mark of the beast and the seven last plagues fall upon them, they are no longer conscious, cognizant of the glory of God within their souls. So, the beast appears as Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13, 18, and the golden cup appears as the vessel containing the fullness of the spirit of Antichrist. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17, for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 and 22. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. In verse 21, we see the captivity of those who reside within their own glory. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I, I will be exalted in the earth. This is God is declaring his glory will continue to reside and he will magnify his glory unto the end of time. So Isaiah 24, 21 and 2, verse 21, we see the captivity of those who reside within their own glory. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. In verse 22, the very the first line, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 14, where we have the vertical detachment of Lucifer 
and his 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 corrupting of the souls and destruction of the flesh is declared upon the nations. We have in verse 13 and 14, we have his motives for him, his attempt to exalt himself above the glory of God and reside in the throne of God, soliciting at the worship of, of all of creation. And then finally in verse 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, this, to the sides of the pit. We have his transformation from Lucifer into Satan as he resides in spiritual form in the atmosphere surrounding our planet, made manifest in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9, and verse 12. 12 and they shall be shut up in the prison, in the, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And we see this transformation of the image to the beast. It looks to me, Revelation chapter 9, verse 7 through 11, we have the transfer, the spiritual transformation that occurs within the souls of the image to the beast as it's witnessed by God and they are manifestly declaring the appearing of their of their king within their souls that appears in verse 11 and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon and of course Revelation chapter 13 verse 15 through 17 we have the 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 seal, the image to the beast appear with the seal of Satan that has incorporated the worship of death into civil power. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image to the beast should be killed. And of course, verse 16 and 17, we have the incorporation of the worship of death into ecclesiastical power. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the beast of the beast, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, which appears to me to be a religious tax. So this first line of verse Isaiah chapter 24, verse 22, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered into the pit. This appears to me to be the corporal captivity of all the glory of the world as they are now taken captive by the manifest appearing of the image to the beast as it becomes successful in incorporating the worship of death into the civil, into civil power and ecclesiastical power and whatever manifestation and measure of power it's capable to do that within the democracies of the world. And we know that it only lasts a few days. But this appears to me, this first line appears to me to be God declaring, this is, peop this is people captive corporeally, this, it, this, this declaring them being prisoners is their their captivity to the image of the beast within its its environment as it, it has obtained a measure of power to summarily execute people that will not serve it and its lusts of, of and its its illicit desires as it labors to make manifest the seal of Satan and the appearing of Antichrist within our world. And finally, the, va the, la the last line of Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 and 22, and they shall be shut up in the prison, and after many days shall they be visited. This is apparent to me that after they're taken captive within their environment to the illicit desires on pain of death to the image of the beast, then they are, they are it appears to me that, that this is this last line is actually their destruction at the second advent of Jesus Christ, where they actually go down into the pit and they wait uh, a thousand years for their resurrection and judgment by Holy Father God. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The first resurrection occurs at the second advent of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power 
her, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So it looks to me like in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 and 22, God is declaring. He's declaring the, 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 the captivity of people in their flesh to the corporeal appearing of the image of the beast as the seal of Satan re resided in predestination and then made itself manifest in full in civil and ecclesiastical power as the image of the beast became successful in incorporating the worship of death into the constitution of man and men, the constitutions of men, and into ecclesiastical fraud. And in these labors is made manifest the mark of the beast. God declares that the glory of the world will be taken those that reside without the glory of God will be taken captive as prisoners in their in their flesh, and then they will be resigned to the pit of destruction for a thousand years, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 6, until the, the third advent of Jesus Christ, and they are cast into the lake of fire as they are manifestly declared and acknowledge that they are, in fact, the children of Satan and have his mark upon their souls. Jeffrey Leon, welcome, uh, Jeffrey Leon, if you're edified by this program, please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel to receive notifications of future installments. And remember, you can come to the throne move of God today and receive your healing directly if you're abiding in mercy and grace as manifested by Matthew chapter 13, verse 10 through 15. Thank you.